the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session of guidance and counseling for upper six. Ngale Stalil Tombe is my name. You are welcome. So, last time I left you with a homework. What was it? It had to do about the difference between simple decisions and complex decisions. So, what is the meaning of a simple decision and what's the meaning of a complex decision? We said a simple decision simply means that the answer is obvious. For example, what you want to do in the morning when you are going to school, you need to take a bus, do you need to take a taxi, do you need during break, do you need to, to consume chocolate or do you need to eat something else? Those are simple decisions that we saw last time. And we also said complex decisions. Now, these are decisions which the answers are not clear. For example, do you want to be single? Do you want to remain single? When you grow up, do you want to be married? Those are decisions which are complex. And you see that they don't have obvious answers. These decisions are just there. For example, we saw the case of our friend. Was our friend or the student going to take a clandestine journey? That was a decision, a complex one. Or was the, the student going to stay and have the job which was stable? So that was a complex decision and we have seen that simple decisions are there they're not the, the answer is not is obvious but complex it is not obvious because there's some certain factors that you have to put in place before you come out with those decisions and so we also talk about the advantages of decision making we talk about decision making what was it about if we said decision making, we had to take a decision. And if we are taking a decision, it means there was a problem. And if there was a problem, it means that there was a choice. So after considering all those things, we needed to take a decision. And so the advantages of those decisions are what? It means that it's going to make you to be more effective. When you are more effective, it means that you will be able to master the act of decision making well in the future. People are going to have confidence in you because you have been taking decisions successfully and people are going now to trust you. They are going to give you more responsibility. And we saw that to follow those steps is going to give you more room for you to be able not to fail because you have been successfully taking this decision and now you can handle them without any problem. So, Advantages of decision making means that you already know how to put these decisions in place in the right way. And if you put them in place in the right way, people will have confidence in you and they will look forward to seeing you and you are not going to make any failure. You will not fail. So today we are going to start another lesson, self-assertiveness. What is self-assertiveness? This one now has to deal with your personality as a student. How do you assert yourself? What is it? What is self-assertiveness? We are going to look at it. And we have our plan of our lesson. We have expected competencies. We have previous knowledge. We have real-life situation. We have learning activities. We have application exercises. We have homework. Our plan is simple. We have the expected competencies. What do we see previously? real life situation, learning activities, application exercises, and homework. So what is it for the student? What is the student going to learn here? At the end of the day, the student is going to see how 
If you assert yourself, it's going to benefit you. If you assert yourself, we are going to come to the definition that what does it mean? And that if you understand some of these assertive techniques which you are going to see, you are going to, is going to that is what we expect the students to know. And this, this study is going to enable the student to understand how that assertive behavior of your personality is going to benefit you in future. How assertiveness is going to benefit you in the future. So, our previous knowledge, we already said we saw the difference between simple decisions and complex. We saw the application of decision making as a process, as a means of guidance in the face of important decisions. We also saw the benefit of applying those decisions. We already saw it last time. So, now, we have our real life situation to show how students can assert themselves. We are coming to the definition. I have a young student. He goes, an upper state student goes during the, the holiday. He wanted a holiday job and he goes for an interview in a company. So our student, a student goes for interview in a company. And then the manager of that company asks the student what the student know about a holiday job. He responded honestly and frankly and convincingly, convincingly without blinking. So this student went for a holiday job. And so the student was asked about what a holiday job means. What does he want to get? What are the advantages? And the student responded honestly, convincing, without blinking. And then the interviewer asked him that, why did you come late? Our student now disagreed politely and said he was outside waiting for his turn because he didn't want to enter without prior knowledge. And so the student now was very attentive, he was listening to what the interviewer said attentively and he gave the response in an assertive way. So we see that this has to do with personality. How do you speak to people? When you get the ask you questions, how do you respond? How do you stand? Your postures, your gestures, personality of, of someone, the student, that is what we are going to see. So we are going to look at our learning activities. These learning activities here, we are going to see some definition of concepts. We are going to talk about Elements that constitute self-assertiveness and mode of self-assertiveness. Our lesson is going to constitute of us defining some concepts. And the elements that constitute self-assertiveness and mode of self-assertiveness. So, look at our diagram. What is self-assertiveness? We have on the one hand aggressive, the other hand we have passive. When you are aggressive, it means you are exploiting others. And when you are passive, it means you are getting exploited. But in the middle is assertive. It means you are being fair. So self-assertiveness now means that you are not going to be exploited by others. I am not going to be exploited by yourself. So it means you are being fair. You are being honest. You are being open. You are being fair to others. You are not imposing yourself. So, we'll go straight to the definition. Assertiveness is being honest about your feelings, your opinion, or your right. You see, self assertiveness, sometimes you can, when you hear that word self assertiveness, you can think there's aggression. But no, it means being honest about your feelings, your opinion, or even your right. It does not mean being aggressive where someone may feel threatened or disrespected, it means you are honest. You speak honestly, you speak calmly, you speak freely, and you don't disrespect others. So that people may think that this attitude of those people who are assertive, they don't have any fear, they don't have shame or doubt when you are assertive. You don't have fear, you don't have shame, you don't have doubt. It means you have self-esteem. Self-esteem means you have you have confidence in yourself. You have all what it takes. It also means that this attitude, it pushes forward. That you are, it, this, it pushes the forward way that you are not imposing yourself on others. 
self accepting here, you don't impose yourself on others. You are there freely communicating with them. You don't want anything that you are going to impose yourself on people or people to, ex to exploit you. So you have no fear, you have no shame, you have no doubt. We talk about behavior. We are only talking about personality. Behavior now, what does it mean? It's the way in which a person behaves will respond to a particular situation or a particular stimulus. When you are in class, a classmate offends you. How do you behave? Or you have a problem with a teacher. How do you behave? Behavior is that way that you are going to respond to a situation. Or you have an argument with someone. How do you respond? We talk about passive behavior. It means you are dormant. It means you are not you are passive you are not aggressive and it's less likely to call you see, when, when you are dormant it means that you it, it happens to be that you don't want to involve yourself you don't want to involve yourself on what is good or what is bad you are just passive something is good you don't you are not there something is bad and it means that you are passive but is that a good way we are going to see you see that some people do not express their feelings, as you have said, in anything. You are in class or somebody looks for you problem, you sit quiet. Somebody takes your thing, you sit quiet. That is passive behavior. I will see that some, this type of people, they don't involve or commit themselves in any life engagement. You are just there. You don't have plans. Except that you want to give your personal satisfaction. You don't want to give your personal satisfaction. You are just there. So we are going to see. Another concept that we are going to, to define in this issue of self-assertiveness is aggression. What is aggression? It refers to the attitude of a person who seeks to impose a point of view by force. You have a point of view, you want to impose it on people by force. That is it. And you are not listening, and you don't listen to others. And you don't listen to others and other subjects, you don't have time for them. And somebody who is aggressive, he forces himself to do what he or she wants. You're aggressive. You don't care what people are, what people say. You're aggressive, you want to impose yourself. So that is it. We are going to see whether it is good. So the first, what we are going to see now is elements that constitute self-assertiveness. One of that element is self-recognition. Self-recognition is what? Is that first moment of self-assertiveness. You see that you can only assert yourself when you say, I am, I have, I am. You are positive, you are confident. So that is self-recognition. That is one element of self-assertiveness. You know that you are able to do something. And in psychology, is is just synonymous to me. You say, me, I have done this, I have this. Your personality is showing there, which means that you are recognizing yourself that you can do something and you can do better. That is one element of self-assertiveness. And it also becomes, it makes you to be aware of your value, your emotions, and you express them in the first person, I, self Recognition is one element of self-assertiveness. Another one is object relation. This one has to do now with the with an individual who maintains a relation with the outer world. You see that man by nature is aggressive. This is expressed in the form of self-consecutiveness, attitude, and seeking pleasure. When you seek pleasure. So you see that from birth, when the child is born, the child cries. That's a form of aggression. The child is imposing the self. When the child is even growing and the mother is feeding the child, sometimes the child bites the nipple of the mother. The child is showing that he's imposing himself. So that is self-recognition to the outer world. And we see that this aggression is shown first, from childhood and goes down to adulthood. So here we are not encouraging this, this, this issue of aggression, but we are saying that when you want to express yourself, you can channel it, you manage it, or you invest 
a positive way. What do, what do we mean? We mean that when you have an issue, you don't need to be aggressive. You have to take it gently. You channel it, you manage it, and then you invest in it so that it's going to bring a good positive outcome. And so we see that when we don't manage our attitude, it's going to lead to disturbances and behavioral disorganization. When you don't manage how you react, it's going to affect others. And it's going to dis it's going to lead to your personality being having a problem. And we are going to talk about exchange and communication. Those are two words which are always seen in self-recognition. You exchange words, you exchange and you communicate. If you exchange your words calmly and you communicate calmly, you are going to assert yourself well. So now, after seeing some elements of self-assertiveness, we are going to look at the mood of self-assertiveness. What, what are those moods? There are two modes. We have verbal and non-verbal. We are talking now about the mood of self-assertiveness. We have two. We have verbal and non-verbal. When we talk about verbal now, we are talking about speech. How do you respond to someone? This, to assert yourself is to communicate freely, directly to your environment. How do you talk in class? How do you talk to people outside? How do you talk to your seniors? This verbal communication also leads you to, to say yes or no in a clear way without hurting others, without making people to feel bad. And you see that all of this has to do with speech. How do you communicate? How do you exchange words? So when you communicate well and you exchange well, it's going to, to show that you master your verbal communication. And we see that when you express yourself through this way, if you speak well, you see that you are going to express yourself in an objective way. You will express your criticism in a good way, your opinion in a good way, and it's going to lead toward a respectful and thoughtful way. How do you speak to people? If you speak to people well, it's going to lead to a respectful and thoughtful way. So our speech is important. They say that the tongue is like a fire. How you speak, it can burn a, a forest. So we have to use our speech well. Now, when we talk about non-verbal communication, we are talking now, not talking about speech. We have said that verbal communication is speech. Non-verbal now is, is not speech. It is at this level, we see that self assertiveness does not manifest itself now through that channel of speech. It's through what our attitude, our way of being, our way that we express ourselves, or how we, how we express ourselves. For example, your gestures. If you're in class and your teacher calls for you, the way that you will speak to your teacher is going to show that this child has a good way of behaving. Imagine that you are in class and they call for you and, and then you, you behave like this. It means that you don't have good posture and you are not calm. Or how you can even look at a friend, you look at a friend in a stern way. That, that is verbal, non-verbal communication. And sometimes, how do you have that eye-to-eye -eye contact with somebody? The way that you look at somebody can actually show that you are respectful, that you master what you are doing and your personality is in order. So that's what we have, we have seen two ways and we are, still, we are still continuing. Your posture, as we have said, imagine as we have, we have just explained, it will be necessary to stand straight in front of a teacher when you are speaking. It shows that you are respectful. It shows that your attitude of listening and proof is going to show that this student is sending a message in a positive way. So we have seen that, we have seen the element of non-verbal communication. We have seen it, posture, and now we are seeing it dressing. Imagine that you are going for, you are going for an interview. The way that you dress, you wear a tight jean trouser and it's torn. Or you, as a lady, you wear a slim dress that reveals part of your body. That shows that your personality has a problem. That shows that your verbal communication also has a problem. So your facial expression, how do you do? If somebody greets you, good morning, and you are stern, it can reveal your serious attitude, your emotions, 
And you can tell someone if you are someone who is calm, who is polite, and someone who is not serious. Okay, so look at look at this diagram. Self-assertiveness. Yeah, it earns others, you earn other people's respect. It increases self-esteem. Self being self-assertive, find win-win solution. It means that nobody is going to impose to you and you too will not impose. You will become a better manager in future or in school and it's going to reduce stress and anxiety. So being assertive now, you are going to end people's respect. It increase your self-esteem. You find win-win. You are going, nobody will be cheated. You will be fair and then you will become a better leader. <laughs> For us to know if we have understood our lesson, we are going to talk about application exercises. What are these application exercises? What is the, what is the situation of our student? We know that our student went to look for a holiday job. And when he went to look for that holiday job, he was asked questions. What does he know about holiday job? Why does he need a holiday job? Our student or our friend, the student answered clearly, without blinking, respectfully. He was attentive. He, he said all what he knew. See, this is it. The student is assertive. He is honest about his feelings or right. He is not aggressive or disrespectful. Our student did what? Our student was what? Our student was calm when they were asking questions. Our student was what? Was attentive was honest, he did not feel cheated, he did not feel imposed, he did not feel bad. He tried to explain all what he knew about the job. And the, direct, the interviewer also asked more questions and our student did what? Answered the question in a nice and polite way. And you see that he's not aggressive or he was not aggressive or he was not disrespectful. And now we talk about what is Verbal communication, we have seen that verbal communication has to do with speech. How do you communicate as students? When you, are asked, when you have a problem, how do you express it? How do you express that? Uh, 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 how do you express yourself? You see that verbal communication, is, you speak clearly, directly. For our students, our student went for the interview. He was not disrespectful. When he was asked questions, he had the time to communicate, to speak that clearly without opposing. He listened attentively. He was not fast to speak. He did not feel manipulated. He did not feel cheated. He stood quietly and explained and he, he, he was assertive. It means he was honest. His feelings were open. He did not feel cheated. He was, he was confident with himself. He showed that he has confidence. He has self-esteem for himself. And then now we talk about non-verbal communication. What is non-verbal communication? Since we have seen that verbal communication is speech, what is non-verbal communication? This one now has to do with what? It has to do with, it does not manifest itself through the speech, but rather through our attitude. How is your attitude? We talk about your gestures. How do you look at your friend? Do you stare at your friend when you have a problem? When a teacher has a, you have a problem with a teacher, do you stare at that one? Do you give a bad look? When you go for an interview, how do you stand? Do you stand straight? Do you stand anyhow? And you're dressing when you go for an interview or you're in school, you come to school. What, how is your uniform? Is your uniform so tight that reveals part of your body? Or you come with a trouser which is so slim it's so slim and you are having problems at the gate. So non-verbal communication has to do with our attitude, our way of talking, our, our way of expressing our personality. So we are going to be careful how we express ourselves, how we speak to our friends, how we speak to our teachers. It already shows that we know what we are doing and that it expresses that our personality is under control. Okay, so look at this diagram again. When we talk about, when we talk about self-assertiveness, what others want, what you want. 
You see, what do others want for you? Some people want to exploit you. Some also will want to do what? To cheat you. But being assertive, it means you are fair. Being assertive means you are fair. You will not want others to manipulate you. You too will not want to manipulate others. You want to be honest in what you are doing. You want to be honest. You want to say things clearly. You want to say things objectively. You will not want to impose your feelings on others. You will not want to be rude. You will not want to have that name that this student is. This, you will not want to have that name that this student is not a good student. It's a bad student. So, after looking at all of this, what are we going to say? We say that although everyone acts in passive and aggressive way, you know that sometimes we act in passive way, sometimes we are passive. Sometimes somebody asks your opinion on something, you don't give it. And another time you are aggressive, it means that you want to impose yourself. From time to time, you see that sometimes we can be passive as humans. Sometimes also we can be aggressive. And so that such way of responding, they always result in what? Lack of self-confidence. When you don't have self-confidence, you can respond in any way to someone. You can just be passive. You don't have time to say anything. But what we are saying, we are concluding today is that such way of responding, they always lead to a lack of self-confidence and therefore inappropriate way of interacting. When you behave like that, it shows that you are not interacting well with people and this lesson has actually shown us that self-assertiveness can benefit students when you're in school the way that you behave is going to show that you know what you're doing it's going to remove you from problems with teachers remove you from problems with your friends and make you to show this personality in a good way so we see that self-assertive when we say assertiveness we're not talking about someone who is aggressive we're not talking about someone who is passive we are talking about someone who is honest someone who expresses himself openly honestly frankly without being manipulated without you wanting to impose yourself on others without people without others also imp imposing yourself self assessment this with a situation where you are fair fairness is the word and so and so after saying that i'm going to leave you with a homework this homework has to do with give two modes of self-assertiveness i want you to bring me the answer of this homework next time give two modes of self-assertiveness so this work was done with the help of this guidance and counseling book a response to change and it was also done by this minsec book 2022 guidance counseling a program in cameroon and then we have this reference https which goes to tell us to give credits to where we took our pictures so that link is to tell us where we took our pictures so next lesson we are going to talk about assertive and non-assertive behavior and some techniques of self-assertiveness. We have talked about what self-assertiveness means. We have talked about the mood. We have talked about elements which constitute self-assertiveness. So we are going next time, we are going, we are going to see those behaviors which can show that you are assertive or those behaviors which can show that you are not assertive. And then we are also going to look at some techniques self-assertiveness self-assertiveness have some techniques so next time when we come that is what we are going to see till then see you next time <laughs> On a terre minga, ma terre nyum, on a terre ma jang, ma terre ndom, mane tambia ninya ne injobiayen, gani bana, ma terre mot, gani la kiri wa terre ndom, esetina, bia dinki do, mane tambia ninya ne injobiayen, tam tama mote tam zabike, tam tama tonge tam zabike, tam tam tama mote tam zabike. Mane tambia niña ne injo biayen